again taking time to come and watch these YouTube clips. I'm praying these YouTube messages are really a blessing for each one of you. And most importantly, you're studying the Word of God and growing in the knowledge of God. Today I want to talk about a very serious subject which should be referred as the garments of the high priest which is recorded from the book of Exodus chapter 28. The garments of the high priest. Very seldom people talk about this subject called the garments of the high priest. What is this garments of the high priest? And why should we learn about these garments of the high priest? Well, if you read the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, St. Peter is telling the church, you are a chosen generation or a chosen people, a royal priesthood. A Christian is referred as a royal priest, a kingly priest. Very powerful word. So never forget, if you are a true Christian, your lifestyle is lifestyle of a priest. Well, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, St. Paul is telling, don't you know that you yourselves are temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? In the book of 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 6, 19, twice, St. Paul is telling your body is like a temple. Now, please remember, Jesus said, I will build my church. He did not say, I will build my temple. So, you and I, our bodies are like temple. They're sacred. Why? Inside our body dwells the spirit of the living God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 19, you get another very powerful scripture. Therefore, brothers, sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, the most holy place, if you read in the book of Exodus, there's a place called the tabernacle, the dwelling place, the tent which God told Moses to erect. And there was a section called the Holy of so Holy or the most holy place. And the, only the high priest can enter the most holy place once a year on the day of atonement. That was the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. But when we come to the New Covenant, through the blood of Jesus, the Hebrew writer is saying, the writer of the Hebrews are saying, you and I can enter to this most holy place which is only reserved for the high priest in the book of Exodus or in the Old Covenant. So that tells us very quickly, it is very interesting for us to understand who this Old Testament high priest is. What are these garments he's wearing? And today I'm going to explain these nine garments and what does these nine spiritual garments, you and I, we who are called the priests for the Lord Jesus Christ, how you and I too should have these nine spiritual garments for us to grow in the knowledge of God because we have been asked to come into the most holy place through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read only a few scripture verses. You can read much more later from the book of Exodus chapter 28. And here the Lord is telling Moses, you shall make holy sacred garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and dignity, for beauty or honor. You have to make this garments for the high priest who was Aaron for glory, honor, beauty and dignity. And you shall speak the wise hearted whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they make Aaron, the high priest, garments to consecrate. Look at why these garments are essential for the high priest. It is the same reason you and I need these spiritual garments so that we too lead a life of dignity, glory, beauty, honor, so that we are consecrated, we are separated to lead a holy life as a priest office. Verse 4, and these garments shall be a breastplate, an ephod, a bridal coat, a mitre, a girdle, and also you shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. The verse goes on to say in verse 5, you should make 
thread of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen. The Lord gives them the color and the texture how these garments need to be done. And you should make him for some of these garments and these garments should have pomegranates of blue, purple, scarlet and some of them should have a hem of bells and a beautiful fruit of pomegranate in between these bells. And you shall make a plate of pure gold and grave upon it. The graving should say holiness to the Lord. Friends, so much. In verse 37, the Lord is again telling, take blue lace and you may be upon the mitre, upon the full front of the mitre, which is a turban, it shall be. And it shall be Aaron's forehead. So many garments, so much of instruction, a minute details are given, even the color that has to be used for these nine garments. And friends, today I'm going to teach you the spiritual nine garments which you and I are supposed to wear because you and I have been called as royal priesthood. We can go into the most holy place and worship and praise the Lord. Here is a beautiful picture I've given how these nine garments or eight or nine garments, I'm going to explain the ninth garment a little bit later. There comes the turban on top, then there's a crown on the forehead, then there is an ephod, then there is a breastplate, then there is a belt, then there is this robe, and then there is this tunic, and then there is a pants which is called the undergarments. These are eight or nine garments which the high priest has to wear for glory, for dignity, for beauty, because he's been consecrated. So you and I are called to be priests of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also should have these spiritual garments to worship, to minister, and most of all, please remember, we too are consecrated because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The word consecrated means separated, set aside, sanctified because we are called to lead a holy life. The first garment of course is called the inner garment. It is called a linen breeches. And the Lord says why Aaron the high priest has to wear. He has to wear this garment so that he will cover his nakedness. To cover his nakedness. And friends we all know when we read the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Adam and Eve they felt they realized naked only when they disobeyed the word of God. And when they fell, they saw their naked, what did they do? They stitched fig leaves to cover their nakedness. But the Lord said, no, 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 that is not the right covering. And there a lamb was slain and the skin was covered for the Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness. Not the fig leaves, a skin. And friends, there you get the first spiritual garment. The spiritual garment which covers our nudity is salvation, the blood of Jesus. You read this in the book of Revelation chapter 16, 15. The Lord said, Behold, I come as a thief and be watchful, lest you walk naked in my presence. A man or a woman who does not have the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior. A man or a woman whose sins are not washed by the blood of Jesus is spiritually naked in the presence of the supreme almighty God. We get the first garment called salvation when we believe the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior. So salvation is the first garment. The next garment is, is called a tunic. A tunic is this long white color coat or robe we may call it, it completely covers all the flesh or exposed part of the priest. So it is, when we believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we read the book of Romans chapter 3, 22, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ is imparted unto us. The word righteousness means right standing right relationship. So you and I, we are righteous because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ covers our entire 
spiritual part of our soul. So the second garment is called righteousness. Now we come to the third garment. The third garment is usually referred as a robe. Now you can see that is the tunic, the long one. The robe is a little bit shorter than a tunic and it, the Lord has given a color. It has to be a blue color and below this robe there has to be golden bells and in between there has to be pomegranate fruit stitched out of linen of this color, purple, scarlet, white, and blue, and the gold. All these colors, friends, have a reflection, have a meaning. The color purple is the color of king, how Jesus is introduced by Matthew as king. In the scarlet color is the color of a servant. Mark introduces Jesus Christ as a servant king. The white color is the color of righteousness or perfect, and Luke introduces Jesus Christ as a perfect man. Blue is the color of divinity and John introduces Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And gold on which the pomegranates are done is a color of divinity or purity. Now you will see this belt is also a symbol of noise which is a symbol of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and this fruit which is a stitch in cloth of these four colors is a symbol of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and then you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 14 talks about the gifts and 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about the love. So there you get this robe of blue and the robe is worn as signifying authority. So here, the third garment is the authority you and I receive from the Lord Jesus Christ when we receive Him as our Savior. Salvation, righteousness, authority. Luke 10, 19. Then you come to the fourth garment, which is a garment called ephod. A ephod is shorter than a tunic, shorter than a robe, and there it now comes more like an apron. A, a, a ephod is worn by the priest because he's been given a responsibility to intercede for the people every time he becomes before God and to represent God every time he comes before the congregation. So the fourth garment is a beautiful garment which tells each one of us you and I have been given a responsibility to go and tell the world about the love of Jesus Christ, which is referred as the Great Commission in the book of Matthew chapter 28, the last verse. And once again, you get these four colors coming again, which once again tells us the reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ in whatever we do in this world. The fifth garment is called the breastplate. And there is the breastplate which comes right above the heart. And the breastplate signifies to the priest that every time he stands before God, he's taking the 12 tribes, representing 12 different gems before the Lord. And for a Christian like you and I, the breastplate reminds us of the love we have for the Lord Jesus Christ. The first love, that is the fifth beautiful garment you and I should always wear. And this five beautiful, the fifth garment is also reflected in this beautiful relationship we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Six plus six, the twelfth relationship you have with Jesus Christ through the first love which is imparted into our heart through the Holy Spirit. So the fifth garment is the first love, which is the breastplate. Now we come to the sixth garment. The sixth is not really a garment. It is a stone called Urim and Tumim, where the priest has it inside his breastplate, inside a pocket, inside a pouch. So if you want to know the God's will, he picks up one of those stones, a white or a black stone. In case, if he picks up the stone called Urim, the answer is no. If it is Tumim, the answer is yes. That is how the Old Testament priest discerns the will of God. But for us, the Urim and Tumim is the word of God. God's word is God's will. And the sixth garment is we should learn to discern the will of God by reading the word of God. 
The seventh garment is a long belt. It's a very, very long belt. It's almost 15 meters long. It is wrapped around the waist of the priest. Again, the four colors, the four reflections of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all know from the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, the belt stands for truth. And the seventh garment, number seven, a Christian's garment, a truth, sincerity before God, before man. And that brings us to the eighth garment, which is a turban. A priest should always wear a turban, which signifies to you and I maturity. When we are Christians, newly born again, we become a baby in Christ. When we wear the first garment, I just told you salvation, a baby gradually begun to grow and grow and become mature. So the eighth garment, number eight, always denotes maturity, where we read, study, meditate, confess, obey, and grow in God's word, knowledge of God's word, and understanding the word of God, which is the tavern. Now that brings us to the ninth garment, which is basically a kind of a crown or it's a kind of a gold plate where the priest wears just above his forehead. He wears above the forehead below the turban. And there on this golden color uh, crown or kind of a sheet, there is a word mentioned holiness unto God, holiness unto the Lord. And there you get the ninth garment, a gold plate crown above the forehead. And we all know forehead, is our mind. When David struck Goliath, the stone went and struck the mind of the forehead of Goliath. And that tells us the most important garment of all. Bring your thoughts, your mind, under the captivity of the Holy Spirit. The ninth garment is our mind in the Spirit of God, dwelling in the presence of God, doing the will of God, where our mind is saturated with the wonderful melody and the will of God's word. So there you get this nine beautiful garment the high priest has to wear. Well, as I come to the closing, that is not the end of the high priest. High priest has not told you to wear these nine garments. There are certain lifestyle the high priest has to do. Why? Because he's been called to lead a holy life and his lifestyle should always distinguish between holy and that which is not holy. Now please remember, the high priest I'm talking about Old Testament, but you and I are the New Testament. We are not only supposed to wear these nine spiritual garments and friends, we are supposed to lead a holy lifestyle. And that is the lifestyle which is reflected in the rules of the high priest. I just put in the point form. You can just take time and read this. All that's mentioned in the book of Leviticus 21 is absolutely amazing. The strict rules the Lord gave to the Old Testament priest. How much more we walk under the new covenant. How much more we should lead a holy life with the help of the Holy Spirit. Some of the rules, just have a look at it. You must not drink wine. You must not make himself ceremony unclean. You must not attend funerals or go to unclean places. You must not shave your head. You must not uh, marry a prostitute or a divorced woman. You must, must, must be anointed with anointing oil and must be from your same brethren. You can't just go to the, any place who but where you want. You must always learn to wear the priestly garment. You must keep your hair very tidy. Never keep your hair untidy. Must not tear his clothes. Must not go near a dead body. Must not go to desert or desecrated sanctuary. Must always marry a virgin. And there are so many rules are given for this priest so that they will conduct themselves holy. Friends, all those what I just mentioned have got spiritual significance and also has physical significance. And that tells us if an Old Testament priest is called to lead a 
such a holy life. You and I, the New Testament priest, having the Holy Bible, having the anointing of the Holy Spirit, how much more we can live a holy life in this world. And friends, I'm going to come to the closing by giving you a few more clues about these garments of the high priest. Friends, if you read these nine garments of the high priest, this is a basically a picture of a preparation of a bride. The first love, the anointing, the spiritual virgin, the inner beauty, and most of all, a life tested for the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you are really blessed by this wonderful message, the message about the garments of the high priest, and you will be dressed in these beautiful garments held by the Holy Spirit. Go through this passage, study the scriptures, and I'm sure you will be blessed. Shall we pray? Father, we come, Lord, into your beautiful presence today, Lord. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, about these holy garments, the garments of the high priest. Today, we pray, we who are in the New Testament, we adorn ourselves, we will dress ourselves with the spiritual garments and keep these garments without spot or wrinkle. As the Holy Scripture says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27. Please help us, Lord, to lead a godly life so that when you come in your glory, we will be dressed with all the spiritual garments to be raptured and to be in your presence. Holy Spirit, help us. If there's any of these garments are missing in our life, help us, Lord, so that we will put on these garments and lead a life that is pleasing to you. Thank you once again. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this message. I pray you are blessed. And if you have any prayer requests or any questions, please send us the email. You will see the email address coming soon. And we will be in touch with you. Thank you once again. God bless you. Amen. Amen.